Welcome to another exciting episode of Painting with a Maniac! Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> thanks for joining me for another episode of Painting with a Maniac. And because we are on the theme month for The Walking Dead, here's Negan, the board game by Mantic Games. We're just going to do a quick little video. And this little video will be about how I paint the walkers from, from the set for Here's Negan. But again, I painted them to be like they are into the comic books. In the comic books, they are more just black and white and they're shaded and that's about it. Sometimes they may have a little bit of hint of color here and there, but because of here at Board Game Maniacs, I figured it'd be interesting to paint them with no color, just black and white miniatures, which you see in the Here's Negan gameplay videos that are being released this month. And this one here is probably, you probably have seen a couple of them already if they're out. If not, wait for them because they're well worthwhile watching. It was a lot of fun doing them. But in either case, we are going to be painting one of the walkers. So you can see one of the walkers here. He's got some seam lines on his head right here and a little seam here. And you know, that's, you know, the, the miniature is really nice detailed. I really like the look of it. And there's not much more I can say about this except for that they're a lot of fun to paint them in the black and white scheme. They're not very difficult, but we're going to break the, the barrier here onto painting with the Maniac. And we are actually going to be doing some airbrushing onto him. We never did that yet before on Board Game Maniacs where I showed you airbrushing, but I managed to be able to set my camera up to my close to my airbrush booth so that we can do airbrushing too as well. So we're going to do that. But first off, the first thing we're going to do is look at one that's already been painted. And the next thing we're going to do is texture the base with the sand. Like we've had a video, a quick tip, or we're going to have a quick tip video on how to do the sand in the next month for the theme. I'm not saying what it is. I'm not spoiling it, but you'll find out. In any case, we're going to do the sand. So you're getting a, a tutorial on how to do the sand or how I do the sand, which I've done previously in some more painting with the Maniac and I'm starting to ramble more and more. But anyhow, let's look at one of the miniatures that I've already painted up out of the series and it's in black and white. Whee! There you go. So as you can see there, lots of texture onto him. He's got some nice gradation going on. It's kind of like uh, just black and then white and gray too as well. Turn around to the back. I didn't do much to the, the base of this, like I didn't highlight it, I just kept it rough with the sand and black on the base. But what we may end up doing is just doing some highlighting to the bases. We'll see. But in either case, that's what we're going to achieve today. I really like the cartoony look of this because it does remind me of comic books with all the texture going on and everything. Very fun. So anyhow, let's start off by doing the base. It's all about the base, baby. To do the base for this guy to give the sand effect, we just need a half decent bristle size, as you can see there. You know, an old brush, new brush, don't really matter. It's just a brush and the miniature, obviously. We're going to use some undiluted PVA. It's nice and thick. And we're also going to be doing a wash with some PVA. But again, it is a wash. You can see I got some grass going on in there. If that's not for this tutorial, I just used a cup that I've already used when I shot one of the painting with the Maniac episodes. It's not going to interfere with it. But this mixture of PVA and water, it's probably one part PVA to about three or four parts water. What you want to go after is like a milk consistency. Let's see if I can kind of. I don't want to dump it out. So yeah, it's a milk consistency as you can see. So that's what we're going after. And we're going to need some sand too as well. You will certainly see what we need very quickly here because it's simple. First step for doing the base is we take our undiluted PVA solution. When I say solution, it's just PVA. And we are going to go on the base. We want to try to avoid getting it on the toes or on the feet. But if you do, hey, it's just going to add kind of to it. So, you know, it's up to you, really. Very simple, though. So you're just going to do this, 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 this. Na, 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 na. 
and you can see I'm not like globbing it on that it's so thick. Just enough, just like that. I'm gonna clean my brush off here. And while we're still rolling on this, we're just gonna keep continuing on. So I'm just gonna push him in the way and we are going to grab this handy dandy container, sour cream, cause I'm hungry. Actually, it's low fat sour cream. I eat healthy, that's right. Nah, in any case, inside this container, you see sand, foam, cork, different types of coarse sand, different uh, thickness, I guess, or grades of sand. And I picked all of the sand up at a local hardware store and mixed it all together and I broke up some corks, cork into it. So if you don't want any of the cork, you don't have to put it in with this mixture, it's just I find it easier. And it's big enough that it's, you know, I can just move it out of the way if I have to, to uh, if I don't want cork onto the base. But now, now I'm taking my miniature and I'm smurging them in the sand, just like that. Leave them sit for a can of one, two, three. Good enough. And then we're gonna take them out. Knock off the excess. Wipe around the base. Just like so. And you can see there's a little bit of spots left over that the, that the sand did not grab onto. So what I do is I'll just take a little bit more PVA and I'll go back over it again. And I'm not in a painting action, I'm more of dabbing because if you paint, you're probably gonna rip off all of the sand. But you inevitably may pull off some sand by doing this regardless. But there you go. Then back into the sand he goes. One, two, three. You don't have to wait that long, but I'm just trying to be an over dramatic for the camera. So there. He is covered in the sand. There's little empty spots on the on the edges, but that's fine. I don't have to keep it. Don't have to have it completely covered. No big deal. Let's get the sand out of the way here. Just place him back down. Now, the next step, this is a very super technical step that you need to pay close attention to because you will mess it up like I did. No, I'm joking, it's not that technical. We take the water down PVA now and we hold the miniature by the head. Yeah, you know, zombies, you know. Just dipping in with the PVA, the water down, and I am using a diving motion and I'm pretty much flooding the top of the base with this water down PVA. Just like so. Oh yeah. That's it. Take that glue. Take that glue, you dirty walker. Clean my brush off. Now, what I like to do is I'll just, you know, dab off the, actually you don't have to do that. It's just, if it's a little bit more pooly, it's just gonna take a little while longer to dry. So we'll move that out of the way. We'll take your stand back again and just sit them on top. And that's it for the basing part of getting it ready before we start airbrushing it. So what we're going to do is I'm gonna stop the camera, gonna leave this dry, and when this is dry, we are going to be starting up recording in my airbrush booth where we're gonna get the look for the black and white. So hold on, we'll be back momentarily. Everything is all dry now with the base. And I just got him sitting, my camera's kind of wigging out here. Uh, I got him finished here. You can see right there. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we're at my airbrush booth. You can see it's well used. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to apply the black primer all over the entire miniature. And to do that, we are going to be using none other then it's a surface primer by Vallejo. It is, I'll show you on camera here if I can get it in focus. Let's pull it back a bit. So you can see that's the surface primer that we're gonna be basing out the entire miniature. And then we are going to do some uh, uh, zenital highlights, I guess is what you call it. Um, to do two different other colors, which is gray and then white. Now. Just a word of caution here is I'm going to be turning on my airbrush booth fan and also my airbrush show. It's going to be a little bit loud. So because of that, before we do that, I'm gonna show you what we're doing. 
and then uh, we'll just, you can see the video of me doing it. So first I got my airbrush hair. Don't ask me what airbrush it is. It, this hair I bought it off of eBay, but you know, you can use a badger, you can use an awada, you can use a pache, it, it's totally up to you. I'm not here to talk about what airbrush to use and everything or my compressor setup and everything else. So we're here just to paint this miniature. So with this miniature, we're gonna base them out all in black. And then after that, we are going to take our airbrush and we're gonna put it on more like a 45 degree angle upward from the base. So what will I zoom out a bit here so that you can see what I'm talking about. So that might make it a little better. So your miniature, 45 degree angle, it's going to be gray after we do the black and then it's going to be like directly above and we are going to do the white. So just aware of that. So right now I'm just going to get my paint all mixed up, put it into my airbrush, turn my airbrush on, my airbrush booth and I'll be back and we'll go through the airbrushing for this miniature. All right, got everything set up here. So again, this is my miniature. What we're going to do is I just took a, a stick with some uh, blue tack onto it. And we're just going to stick the miniature to this piece of wood or stick. Just like so, so I don't have to keep holding it while I'm airbrushing it. I got my black primer and my airbrush. And we're just going to start airbrushing. And again, it's the entire miniature that we are airbrushing. Try to keep it on camera hair. It's not really in focus. Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can maybe get it in focus better. Whoop, wrong way. There we go. So again, I'm just making sure I get a nice even coat with my airbrush. Maybe the camera will focus in. There we go. But he, he's pretty much all, all done. No gray is showing through. So we're gonna leave that sit. Then after that set, then we'll be back. I'm gonna clean my airbrush out and we're gonna do the gray color next. So we'll be back momentarily for that. We're gonna mix up the gray color that we're going to use now. And you can buy gray primer already or gray airbrush paint, but we are going to mix up our own. So we are going to use White Scar Air from Citadel. And we're also just gonna use the same black surface primer that we used. So for the white, for the gray, and also too as well as I have one of these little eyedroppers, which can be very handy dandy. So I'm just shaking up the White Scar paint first like this and we're gonna scoop some up we don't need a whole lot that should be pretty good and again apologize for the noise but it can't be helped because this is with for my airbrush booth so you can see I have a little bit of white scar in there and now we're gonna mix a little bit of the the surface primer in with it but when I say a little bit I mean a little bit because I don't want to go too dark with the gray so one drop I'll try first and we'll give this a quick mix see what the tonal value is yeah it's actually a pretty good tone I like it so you can see there without it being in shade, the tonal value. So that's what we're going to do for the gray. May have to mix up a little bit more, but I'm just gonna dump this in my airbrush and then we'll be back to airbrush at probably, like I said, maybe 45 degree angle or 60 degree angle. I'll show you when we come back. Ready to airbrush on the angle. So again, I took it off the stick this time so that I can control it better by turning it and everything. The key thing here is to keep it at the proper angle at all times. So again, my airbrush, it's roughly like this angle that we're gonna be spraying and hitting him on. So we'll just start off. And we always want to keep the angle at the same 
and the distance too as well. Again, just turn it around. Don't take a lot of uh, paint to do this. Just gotta move my thumb out of the way because it was in the way for the back of the leg. There we go. And that's it for the gray. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go directly with the white scar and it's going to be probably just instead of spraying it directly down onto it, like exactly down, it's kind of just a very slight angle like this. So it's going to hit pretty much all of the protruding parts with the white. So I'll mix, clean my airbrush out, mix it up, and we'll be back and I'll show you how to do that part. It's all dry, the gray is dry, and so now we are just going to do the final step with the airbrush in the airbrush booth, and that is we're gonna use white scar again, and we're going to spray it at a higher angle so if i can get this it's kind of like this angle here it'd be the best way to explain it i kind of got to keep it zoomed in a little bit let's zoom in just a little bit hopefully the camera will grab the focus on the miniature this way so again i'm holding it from the base like so and the airbrush is going to come in And again, it's very much a high angle. Spin him around. Same angle. Pretty good. Let's get the sides of his legs a little bit. There. I'm happy with that. So you can see there, that's three colors, black, gray, and white. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Oh, wrong light. Sorry, everybody. Better look at them. There we go. So black, gray, and white. You can see here. Now what you can do, again, in, I'm mim trying to mimic the comic book a bit. They are black and white primarily, but you know, they all have hints of color, or even like when they have blood, they'll put the blood onto it and that. So he's eating, it looks like maybe possibly intestine or something, I'm not exactly sure. So we could possibly paint that up with uh, the color for the intestine, we can leave it just black and white like that. I'm not exactly sure, but in either case, we'll decide that when we go back to our painting desk. So I'm gonna cut the video, let this dry, clean my airbrush out, and then we'll be back at the painting desk where it's a lot more quiet. Here we are back at the painting desk, and you can see here, I'm just gonna take them off of the, uh, the stand for a second to show everybody about this. So primarily he is white, but if you look, well, white and gray, kind of, you can see the tonal changing there. But if you look on an angle here, it's more black. Black underneath here, you can see the gradation, it kind of goes up. So this is what I wanted to create. So I'm very happy with the way he turned out, just like the other one that I painted off camera. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to paint the base. I did discuss that I may, because he's holding the, uh, the intestine, it looks like, and he's eating it, painting the blood onto it. but. 
Matching the other miniatures that I've already painted for this game, the Heroes Negan by Mantic Games, we have to keep with consistency. So if I put some blood and gore on him, I'm gonna have to do it for the rest of the miniatures. And I really don't wanna do that because I'm happy the way the miniatures turned out. So we're not going to paint that, but just be aware. You can throw a little bit of color into it like they do in the comics here and there, and you can bring it out. But we're gonna continue on. We're gonna paint the base before we do the wash. And we are gonna be using Storm Firm and Ver. Let's give that a quick little shake here. And there we go. It's so no technical part for painting the storm. Storm, Furman, Burr, Fur on the base. I can't even say it. See, I just painting it on. Just like so. No big thing. Just gotta watch it, you don't get it on his feet. Or the bottom part of his legs. because he wouldn't have gray on his feet or his legs. But if you did make that mistake, what you could do is, you know, throw some vomit and blood onto it, or just go over it with the, the white, and that'll fix it up. There you go. So yeah, very simple for this. So we're gonna let this dry, and then when this is dry, we'll be back to throw the wash onto it, and after the wash is all done, then we'll just take a look at it. We may have to do a little bit of dry brushing with some Longbeard Gray or some white and Longbeard Gray just to fix up the highlights. But when this is dry, the base will be back to do the next step. Now that the base is dry, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put the wash onto it or shade. And we're going to use none other than Citadel's Nuln Oil. Yeah, make sure you give this a really good shake though because it can have a lot of settlement sediment at the bottom like it all the the main color and everything could be settling there so you want to make sure so yeah and with this nuln oil we're just going to apply it over the entire miniature as well as the base too as well and i'm not going light with it either because i want to give that really really dark look to it. It is going to end up lightening up a bit, lighting up a bit, I should say, when it's dry. But for the most part, you want to make it as dark as possible. So that's why it's good to give it a good shake to, to make sure that all, all of it is mixed up properly and thoroughly before you start applying any, any of it to your miniature and get the, the most coverage. And let's do the base here. Dee 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 dee. Just like this, add a little bit more to the base. Because like I said before, it's all about the base. Fish it off. A little bit more here. And I find by painting it this way, like the more it pulls, the better off it looks. So you can see there, it's nice and shadowed. It's all blended, the known oil blended the white and the gray and the black together nicely. So it's very subtle, just like that. So we're gonna leave this dry and we'll be back and see if we're gonna throw any highlights onto it. Well, there you have it. All of the known oil wash is dried. And you can see here the nice detail with the gradation going from dark to light, black, gray, white. Really good natural highlight onto it because of the white at the end of it and then just a wash. You can see how dark it got underneath here. I really, really like the, the shadows into it. It makes them look a little more menacing. And like I said, you can just, you could scratch this, you could do the seaming beforehand, which I didn't bother doing, because this is just for a uh, demonstration purpose of how I painted the zombies, or the walkers, I should say, from Manta Games, here's Negan. And on top of that, you can see the base is all done. The only other one step left is to paint around the rim black. 
but I'm not going to do that on camera because it, it's not a step that you really need. But you can see here with this guy, you see I, I painted the rim around black. But the comparison of the both of them, very close. The tonal value is very spot on too as well. I could again, I'll go over with some long beard gray by Citadel and do some dry brushing to bring it up. But I'm not going to do that because I like it, it like the way it is. It, it turned out just like this one here. And it matches all my other walkers that I have for the game. And that's it. So that's how we paint up the walkers in the monochromatic black and white uh, for the game. Here's Nika by Mantic Games. Hope you enjoyed this quick little painting with the Maniac episode. It was very quick, very basic. You can pump out at least 30 or 40, 40 of these very quickly in an afternoon. You don't get 30 or 40 of the, the walkers into the game. I can't exactly remember off the top of my head of how many walkers you do get in Here's Negan, but it's not that much. You can get them all done in one sitting like this very easily. You just assemble them, so paint them all black and then do them all gray and then do them all white. And then on top of that, then it's just a wash and you know, that's it. But remember the sand part is first. The key thing that I want to express here again is very important. So all black and it's kind of like on an angle like this for the gray and then an angle like this for the white. And if you keep them angles consistent, you don't change them, you know, it's going to turn out half decent. This is definitely usable for on the table. You can again, go in and you can add some vomit or blood, add a little bit of color. But I didn't add any other color to any of my other walkers, so I want to keep the, the look consistent across the board. So that's why I did it that way. So there you go. I, I don't know what else to say here except for one thing. And that is, if you like this video, jump over to Board Game Maniac, click on the subscribe button, the bell notification, and like it, share it, comment the heck out of the videos that are on our Board Game Maniac YouTube channel. And also, if you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, just head over to patreon.com slash board game maniacs and you'll see the three tier levels that we have set up. Then you can take advantage to either one of the three or you can just make a one time uh, donation. I guess you want to call it. It's, not, it's to help so we get more games in, more paints and so we can continue shooting videos such as this. And remember too as well, very important that during the gameplay for this, we've been calling out a certain actor and it is Terry Crews. So again, Terry Crews, if you hear about this, we challenge you to come to Board Game Maniacs and play Here's Negan with us. And I will personally make you a customized uh, miniature card using the miniature of John, but it's going to be for you. And it's going to be Cheeseburger Eddie and you can have a one-time game effect, like I said, that if your stamina is down really low and to build it up, all you gotta do is take one action to eat a cheeseburger and it brings your stamina up two levels. Now that's only a one-time effect for the whole game. You don't wanna make it too overpowered, even though the cheeseburger already is super overpowered already, but it'd be a blast playing with Terry Crews. So if you know Terry Crews, get this video to him as well as the other ones for here, Negan so that he can see that we have challenged him to come and play on Board Game Maniacs. Who knows, it may work, you never, never know. So until next time, Board Game Maniacs, play some games, paint some miniatures, kill some walkers, challenge Cheeseburger Eddie to come play in Board Game Maniacs, and most importantly of all, that is. What's that, you gonna say? I'll say it. What is it? Translated is, be a maniac. I'll see you next time. Boo! Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in their bellies, and play more games, we'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head.
for all of your support. And until next time, board game maniacs, be a maniac.